Greetings, boys and ghouls, and welcome to this spooky edition of Talk Gnosis, where the horrors of existence in the material world will drive you to the depths of madness. Stay tuned. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Talk Gnosis. I'm Father Tony. Joining me is my co-host, uh, Jonathan Stewart. Jonathan, hello. Hello, Father Tony. Are you uh, frightened? I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and you know what frightens me is uh, Halloween. It's our Halloween special. And joining us to talk about Halloween-y stuff and horror movies and Gnosticism and all kinds of cool stuff is uh, my, my go-to guy for horror movie stuff, uh, Deacon John DeGilio. Hello, Deacon. Hello, everyone. So uh, tell us a little bit about your interest in horror movies, because I know you're a big fan and you, do, you have a little uh, blog about horror <laughs> movies, and tell us all about that. Boy, that could take all night right there. <laughs> uh, I've been a horror movie fan since I was just a little kid. Uh, some of the best memories of my childhood and of my father in particular, who is no longer with us, uh, were literally late night horror movies. So it's sort of, I grew up with it. It's part and parcel of what I do now. Uh, it really has been a big part of my life. So it's just something I enjoy. Uh, that's great. So um, <laughs> I think that we have... Uh we have a lot of individual movies we could talk about, so let's, let's save a little bit of that until later. But um, what do you think that the, uh, the appeal of the horror movie genre, what do you think the appeal is for somebody who has a kind of a Gnostic worldview? Boy, for somebody that has a... Well, let me start generally. You know, the appeal of horror movies, I think, in general is we like to be scared on occasion, but scared in a controlled way. I'm not talking about frightened for our lives in the real sense of things, but there's a certain rush that you get. It's, it's an escapist kind of rush when you watch horror movies. And in many ways, there's something fantastic about them. Uh, they're always over the top. And I think that's where the Gnostic appeal also uh, comes into play. There's an element of fantasy if you will, to horror movies, uh, especially when it comes to things like the paranormal or uh, abilities with some of the, I think of some of the classic monsters, for example, you know, the interplay of good and evil. And these are themes that we see uh, in Gnosticism in general. So in many ways, horror movies, like science fiction movies, speak directly to those things that interest us most as Gnostics. Mm-hmm. Some of the things that come to my mind, uh, you know, the um, Frankenstein's monster, you know, the, the creation of, uh, of a life from these disparate kind of parts and elements and uh, the, the created being overtakes the creator at some point. That, that's uh, mm -hmm. that, that's and a fun one for me. Anything that involves the spirit world or, you know, just some kind of world beyond our own or the notion of dreams and phantasms, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's see. Um, do you think that the, uh, do you think that these Gnostic kind of ideas are deliberate on the part of the authors, filmmakers, what have you, or do you think that it's just such a part of the collective unconscious that, that these things just kind of appear? Well, I think there's two sides to that. I think generally it is part of the collective unconscious because one doesn't have to have the slightest interest or inkling as to what Gnosticism is to have this appeal to them. But at the same time, I think many of the writers and directors have begun to purposefully incorporate these things in there because they know that there's a market for that now. And I hate to throw it back to things like Dan Brown and the Da Vinci Code, but let's face it, you know, the idea that there are conspiracies or uh, powers beyond our own really is a big selling point these days. People get excited about that. So I'm starting to see more movies where I can say that this is now purposefully being worked in almost to the point of caricature. What's your favorite scary movie you've seen in the past year? Oh, in the past year? Boy, that's a really good question. 
I've seen so many. Uh, I would say, oddly enough, a movie called The Battery. And I'm not sure that it was filmed in the last year, but that's when I came in contact with it. And it's a zombie genre film that sort of takes you outside of the norm. So there's not a lot of zombies and gore in it. It's more or less the interplay of the characters that's appealing. It was a lower budget, uh, but I would highly recommend it. It's called The Battery. Good stuff. I'll check that out. I like The Babadook. Did you see that one? I really enjoyed The yeah. Babadook. And I know that that's controversial among uh, horror movie Is fans. Is it really? Some people really loved it, and then others really seem to dislike it. <laughs> you don't hear a lot of people that say, ah, it was okay. So it's always interesting to see where horror fans fall <laughs> you know, on these sorts of things. But I, I personally enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I rented it uh, on uh, Video On Demand, and I started watching it, and then you know you have 48 hours, and then they'll shut you off. So <clears throat> I started watching it, and I was by myself, and I got about maybe halfway through it, and then I shut it off. Like, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> and then I started it the next day, and I got another like quarter of the way through, and I shut it off again, and then I'm like, you know, I got 48 hours. I got to finish this thing, and I just plowed through it. <laughs> yeah, anything supernatural is, is really... Uh, and, you know, that's a genre that I really particularly like. So any movies in the Insidious mm -hmm. uh, series, I know Insidious 3 was recently out. Uh, Paranormal Activity, we're about to get the final installment, or what they're saying is the final <laughs> installment. One never knows with those sorts of things. That, that, that's my cup of tea. Yeah. We we're supposed to, you know, it could be like Rocky 37 at some point, right? Exactly. <laughs> Oh yeah, so my my uh, director just whispered in my ear. Uh, we're recording this on Back to the Future Day. I don't know if that's relevant to anybody because this is getting released. <laughs> so he said he said Jaws nineteen, and that's uh, <laughs> that's kind of kind of relevant uh, for a week ago for all of you who are now watching this on video. Good stuff. That's great television. All right. <laughs> um, what's uh. W can you pick a movie that, is, as an example of a really good, um, really good melding of Gnostic ideas and, and horror? Well, interestingly enough, one of my favorites, and I'm not even sure how old it is now, but for, for those who are, were wrestling fans or were familiar with uh, Rowdy Roddy Piper, the famous WWE yeah. wrestler, who you know only recently passed away, he made a horror movie, I want to say back in the 80s, called They Live. Right. So to me, that was even, you know, that was sort of pre-Matrix Matrix. Matrix. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the ones that really stands out to me. That one's fantastic. And, you know, very quotable movie also. <laughs> yes. I came here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> After um, years of hearing about it, I've only recently seen it uh, myself, and uh, I found it to be both a, a very enjoyable and a very Gnostic movie. Yeah, um, totally holds my, up, too. My, uh, my partner, she can't deal with horror movies uh, at all, so um, um, she, she's away on business for actually most of October, so I've been uh, kind of binging on horror movies, getting my, my creeps and my thrills in now, uh, both because of uh, her absence and because it's, it is the season. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Jonathan, you put a note in here about uh, All Saints and All Souls Day. Did you want to say something about that specifically? Yeah, it, I, it's not specifically related to horror movies, but, but to Halloween, Deacon mm -hmm. John, and, and to you too, Father Tony. Um, so, uh, in, in our particular Gnostic tradition in, in the AJC, we're uh, 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 an independent sacramental church. Uh, we have uh, many uh, important feasts and holidays, and, and two of them are All Saints and All Souls Day. Uh, and they're, you know, very important uh, spiritual days. Uh, but I'm wondering if, if either of you two get any, uh, any um, spiritual interpretations, or do you figure into your own personal spirituality with specifically Halloween. So kind of taking away the more solemn All Saints and All Souls and the more ghoulish aspects of Halloween. Does that figure into your spiritual lives at all? Or do you just keep Halloween as fun and then keep All Saints and All Souls for your private practice or your your uh, your practice with your local groups? 
Well, that's an excellent question, Jonathan. And honestly, for me, it's always been more fun. Um, you know, I was raised in a very religious family. We celebrated All Saints and All Souls, but Halloween was sort of for the kids. You know, the adults weren't too heavily involved in that, except for, you know, my father, who, as I said, loved horror movies. He was a big kid, so if he could decorate the place to look like there had been a zombie massacre, uh, he was going to do so. But again, it was all in fun. But then we had a separate, you know, set of religious observances that came along with All Saints and All Souls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I, I kind of had a similar experience. Um, I, I think it's worth mentioning that uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the Halloween traditions that we have um, come to us from uh, you know from European folk traditions, right? Um, and and those have their roots in r religious tradition as well. And I I always. Um, you know, you you hear the the uh, the neo pagans. They talk about Samhain as the time of year when the the veil between the worlds is the thinnest, right? And uh, I I always kind of felt that to be true. Not necessarily that you know you're gonna see ghosts walking around down the down the street and whatnot, but um, it's just the fall in general has always been a more spiritual time of year for me, and I, and I always kind of get my um, get my batteries recharged, I guess, <laughs> if you want to put it that way, around this time of year. And, and I don't know if part of that has to do with just the, the kind of collection of holidays like All Souls and All Saints and, and the, the various uh, family traditions that, that happen around, uh, around the holidays in, in, in North America anyway. Um, but uh, but it's, always, it's always a good time of year for me to, to kind of pick up on those lost practices that I, uh, you know, didn't have time for during the summer and <laughs> get back into the swing of things. So that's kind of what this season has meant for me. Mm. Yeah, it's funny you mention that because I'm sort of similar and I don't know if it has to do with the changing of the seasons and or if it's just some sort of like leftover programming from from years of school because, you know, you're off during the summer and then it's back to work in September. But um I also have the kind of similar feels about that uh, that idea uh, about you know it, it being a liminal time and the veil being a little bit uh, a, a little bit clearer um, and uh, and I guess that does have to do with uh, with living uh, in the East Coast in the Western Hemisphere where you walk around and, and you do kind of see everything around you dying and know that it's going to come back uh, and there's a chill in the air and your mind just naturally wanders to some of those deeper questions. And of course, Deacon John, you're in a tropical paradise and you don't get that, but <laughs> the days the days are getting shorter out there at least. But uh. Mm. Uh, I, there was, a, uh, there was a, a post going around Facebook that I saw uh, a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of days ago actually, that w um, apparently the tradition of uh, carving pumpkins comes to us from, uh, from Ireland and the British Isles, and, uh, but they didn't have uh, pumpkins, they carved turnips. And if, yes. you, if you've seen any of these pictures going around, they are horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> they are the, the most creepiest little like dried up zombie head looking things that you ever did see you should uh you should google that right now you should stop the video and google you know carved turnips or whatever for halloween and you'll never sleep again so. <laughs> that's actually one of my favorite you know as far as the myths go um that's one of my absolute favorites is you know the origin of the jack-o-lantern yeah. and the story of you know jack with his turnip you know i, I think that's just fascinating right that's a um you know it's kind of the origin the, the original horror movies right where these scary stories that people told each other it does seem like this is the time has always been the time of year you know um the fall through the christmas season of course in, in more in more in england you see um uh christmasy kind of horror stories being told and and uh that seems to be a tradition that we don't have a lot of here in in the U.S. anyway, and um, maybe a little bit sad that that's lost. So, uh, we'll uh, <laughs> maybe maybe we can make a new tradition. <laughs> anyway, um, we are uh, we just lost John, so we're 
trying to get him back. But in the short term, uh, Jonathan, um, we've we have a short list of movies here that we listed as uh, good to talk about. I, I wanted to bring one up specifically because it was the first thing that came into my mind when we um, when we had this topic, and, and it was Stigmata. Yes. Uh, you know, one of the, I mean, as a film, not fantastic, I, I don't think. I mean, okay. it was so-so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, um, but, you know, tell us a little bit about, for people who maybe haven't seen it, can you describe it real quick? Yeah, it, it came out in the late 90s, and it's uh, about a particularly sexy-looking priest who's um, uh, investigating um, conspiracies related to uh, what seems to be a demonic possession, and, and I don't want to give too much away, but there's also um, uh, uh, tracks, uh, uh, hidden gospels that the church has uh, has um, has because um, there is a bit of a twist. Yeah. So uh, that, that that the church has uh, the church has suppressed. I saw it. I think it came out in '98 or '99. I remember seeing it. I was I would have been a teenager then. I saw it in the theaters, and and then I was sort of a an aspiring Gnostic, a baby Gnostic, and uh, I was blown away because they they do actually use the Gospel of Thomas is uh, for quotes for this basically mythical right uh, uh, tract that's in that's in the film. Yeah. So yes, so so there's that Gnostic aspect to it, but there's I there's is also this idea about the divine kind of uh, you know I'd argue in that movie having some problems being trapped in the material aspects of creation. Uh, right. And that's, a, that's another thing that comes out, and that's kind of part of the twist. But, well, watch it. It's, uh, you know, Sexy Priests, uh, uh, Patricia Arquette, Thomas. Um, wearing uh, clunky 90s clothes, you know, clothes, yeah. yeah. It's a very yeah. 90s movie. It's a very 90s movie, but it's, it's, it's so-so. It's worth, uh, it, it, if it's on Netflix, I, I would highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, but, but it was pretty great to kind of see this... Um, to see this stuff coming in, in in a mainstream way, I mean that was uh, pre Da Vinci Code, I believe. Yes, yes, it was. So, right. yeah. So, so any time that you know the, uh, that um, uh, such heavily Gnostic content, and specifically Gnostic content, is uh, playing at the Cineplex, that's a uh, uh, time for for uh, us to celebrate, I believe. Right. And what I found ironic about that movie is that you know it's, the church is going to, you know, the the Roman Church is going to great lengths to suppress this hidden document you know this secret document that was the true sayings of jesus or whatever it is and they're just quoting from the gospel of thomas and like yeah yeah we've known about that for like a hundred years that's not and the church doesn't really do that <laughs> you know what i yes. mean yeah but uh i guess that doesn't make for a very interesting film <laughs> no no it doesn't and and they do use um some of the profound quotes from gospel of thomas in in a rather profound way you know? so if you are uh if you're kind of for all you people who are hardcore Gnostics and, and out there, the ones who aren't just experimenting with Gnosticism, then uh, you'll you'll probably get a kick out of this movie. Yeah. Um, when I whenever I think about that movie, I think about the movie, and I I can never find I can never think of the name of it. Um, it's a movie with Heath Ledger, and he plays a um, a monk or a priest. I can't remember, but he. Uh, um, he plays a sin eater. Well, not until the end of the movie. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Uh, he's he's hunting down a sin eater. What's the name of that movie? Uh, oh, I forget. Anyway, Peter Weller plays the Black Pope, right? He plays like the yes. anti-pope in that movie. And uh, that's another movie that's really actually not very good. But the, because of the subject matter, I just find it interesting enough. I don't think it's gnostic -y really in any way, but, um, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. When I think of Stigmata, I think they came out the same year, and I can't remember the title. And again, this is... Uh, uh, I, I'm wasting some time. I, uh, and it is that, that movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger fights yes. the Antichrist. Because uh, I think they came out the same year. I also saw it in theater, so the two movies are, are mixed in my mind together. Also watch that one if it's on Netflix. Yeah, uh, that is... Oh, I had that on the tip of my tongue. I don't remember. Um, at any rate... Well, have, have you seen um, As Above, So Below? Oh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't oh, care for well. that at all. <laughs> well, that, I was going to say that's an example of where they purposefully tried to co-op Gnostic themes. Yeah. But, you know, A, they didn't understand what they were dealing with, and B, just, you know, throwing in a, a dead Templar and, the, you know, the yeah. Philosopher's Stone doesn't exactly uh, 
you know, do it much justice. Yeah, I got I got some other things to say about that movie, but I think we're out of time, and so let's save that for the podcast. So uh, stay tuned for that um, coming up uh, in a few days. But uh, anyway, um, I wanted to uh, throw out this question for you, the audience, to participate in our conversation here. What are you doing for Halloween? Do you have any kind of traditions, spiritual practices, things that are... Uh, uh, focused on or around Halloween. We'd love to hear about them and, and uh, talk about them with you. So please leave your uh, information there in the comments. Um, Deacon John, uh, where can people find you on the internet if they want to chat with you about scary movies? Oh my goodness. These days, the, <laughs> the best place to find me would be at, um, well, on Facebook, actually. All right. Good. So... Just, you know, type John DeGilio in the search box. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let us wrap it up there, and we will pick it up again uh, for the podcast. And thank you to everybody who is watching, and uh, don't forget to click on that Patreon link at the end of the video here uh, to support us. So for those of you who are watching along at home, we'll see you next week.